So here, something I wanted to do for a while is um, there's a sketch image that was found on the Pinterest, I believe. Um, and it looks great, but I want that to be a vector, uh, design, uh, vector drawing. So what I want to do is first I want to bring it into Photoshop. I want to change my levels, which is Command L or under Image uh, Edit, no adjustment, sorry, uh, Command L right there. And I want to find my white, which is perfectly white right now, but I want to find my black right there. So my black will be that light gray right here. And by clicking on that, this is what happens. It darkens the crap out of it. And then my white will be, you know, the stuff I don't want to see, right? So the light gray right there, right? So a little bit more, maybe a little bit darker. Maybe it cleans it up a little bit. So I'm trying to do that right now. So click on that, click OK. So my drawing is a little cleaner. It's a little bit more high contrast. And I'm going to save that just for presentation, right? So after that, what I want to do is I want to start a new illustrated document. Uh, quickly, a print document, letter size, sure, doesn't really matter for now. And I want to drag and drop that image right there. In there. So it's a pixel image, right? It's a JPEG dropped into Illustrator. So what I want to do now is to convert that into a vector. So if I if I show the uh, your outline right there, it's an image, right? So if I select my image right there and I go under my window and I go image trace, which is about halfway in the middle right here. So image trace functions like this. You, right now it is set up to be uh, converting an image into black and white. You can switch to color or grayscale. At this point, it's just black and white for this part, for this particular one. But you can switch it to a to a grayscale, and you would have a little bit more, you know, of those uh, those little grays right there. So it would it would make it a little dirty. So I want to keep it black and white for this uh, particular one. I can hit the preview, and here it shows me how it turns from pixel to vector. If I change my threshold, it'll make it either lighter or much darker. So I want something a little bit bold like this. So I want to keep it dark. But what I want to do is see, so I see the number of anchors, the number of paths, two colors right now, which is black and white. But if I go into advanced, if I toggle that open, two colors, meaning it will be white, the white background there of my image, and then the black. So I don't, I want to have only one. So I only the, the black one, so I ignore white. So now I'm at single color, and there's fewer anchors. And what I can do is I can increase, or sorry, decrease the noise right there. So yeah, I get a little bit more details. You can see some of those uh, little scratchy marks that appear. So it's, this is just fine, fine tuning it until you get it right. I want to get rid of some of those little barbed wires type little things. So maybe I can increase the uh, number of uh, the amount of noise that gets deleted no so at this point i have to reduce the number of corners reduce the number of paths maybe and it gets a little there you go now we're starting to lose the eyeballs right so if i go all zero and it's just bleh. if i go really high I get a lot of details, but I get a lot of the barbed wires. So the sketch is not exactly super clean, so that's probably why I would have to go back into Photoshop, clean it up a little bit. But this is just a quick demonstration of how to turn something into that. So threshold, reduce the threshold maybe. Uh, you can do also fills or stroke. And that'll go absolutely crazy. You can do a stroke of 10 points. You can ignore the fill. So now it's just a stroke, right? So I want to keep the fills and I want to get rid of the strokes. I don't want that. Uh, snap curve to, right, to, to lines as well. So there's also that as well. So you can, you know, as I said, it's fine tuning. Um, 
uh, Chris kind of path. Yeah, that's what I want to have. I want to have like one big shape. So anyway, so this is how you play with image trace. And this is the number of anchors. So it's still, it's manageable. If I really get rid of all the noise there, ah, it gets, that gets rid of my, uh, my barbed wires a little bit here and there. So I'm going to try to reduce it as much as that. And then here, the problem is your trace is grayed out. So I go, well, what do I do? Do I turn off preview? And then, ah, that I can trace it. So I can trace it now. But then it still hasn't traced it. It's still not a vector, um, you know, path graphic. So what you have to do is you're in your control bar up here, you go expand and you convert tracing objects into paths. And you click on that. And now this is what you have. So at this point, it's a vector graphic. So if I switch my to, to my outline, there it is. There's my outline right there. So at this point, I have this guy right there in, in black. He's transparent. There's no white. So the cool thing is now I can colorize each and a, in each of those little pieces, for example. So since it's already quote unquote made, I have this path right there, right? This negative shape right there that I can't select. I can select the path on the outside of it. So I'm going to select this little guy right there. So I'm going to have to go carefully select just all of the anchors from that specific path. Like so quickly do that. Oops, there you go. So I have this, just this path right there selected. I copy that. So I go under, you know, copy paste, right? I use the shortcut, command C, command V. So it, it pasted, you know, exactly that same shape right there. And then I can snap it into the, the exact same spot, which is not in this, in this case. I can put it a color right there. So I'm going to make a, you know, a gray suit, for example. And then to snap it perfectly, I just zoom in like really, really close. I switch to my outline preview, you know, I move it around. And then I just literally just go with my direct selection tool, make sure the whole thing is selected. And I set just one anchor and I just snap it right there. There, uh, one piece already made. So you can go on like this for the, for the whole thing, uh, one piece at a time if you want to. Um, another trick, um, I'm gonna make a, a copy of it on the side right there. Another trick is you select the outer same thing, you select the outer outline with your direct selection tool. You select just one anchor right there and it'll select the whole outline all the way around, right? And then you delete that first anchor that you, or the first path I should say, or anchor that you've selected and it's deleted again. And now you have every single piece that is all in one, right? So the problem is it's all in one. So I can't, again, same thing. I have to, I can't select one piece at a time or, color it, right? So it's a bit of a, if it's the point, if it's the purpose. So what you do is you select it, go under object, compound path, and then you release the path. And now you, un you can ungroup it. So now you can make that suit into the 80s special that it looks like. Let's see, that's the shirt. Yeah, so you can find, of course, you know, skin tones. Uh, if you're looking for specific skin tones for your, uh, in your color swatches, go into your uh, hamburger menu right there, open swatch library, skin tones. And here you have Mr. Rose right there. Again, you, you know, bring that into a different layer, whatever you want to do it, but, you know, snap it to the top there and then you have, you're starting to have something that, of course, I haven't snapped it to the right spot. What I would do actually, before I do that, I would move that into a different layer. And, um, so create a new layer, have it selected. You see the little blue dot right there and I want to move it, just click and drag and move it to the red layer right there. Outline close enough. Make that a, a dark, 
directory. Again, direct selection tool. Move it over to the right spot. Switch to my preview again. You see I'm like slightly off, so I'm just gonna have to get in there and map it. From there on, I can just go, you know what, I don't need that guy right there because he's a negative space. And I can go in there, change the pants all at once. You know, have some fun with the colors. He's wearing the ugly jeans. And so on. So this is how you convert a vector image into, uh, sorry, a pixel image into a vector.